Hi guys, on this show we're looking at Pickens, Carradine, McCarthy, Alaski, Stone, Duggan, McNee and Wallace. We're looking at 1981's The Howling. Ow! Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of 100 Things We Learned From Film. I'm one of your hosts, my name's Planty and I'm a Scream Queen. <laughs> and I'm the other guy, John. Uh, I used to be a werewolf, but I'm all right now. Oh, very good, very good indeed. John, how are you and your werewolf ass? I'm all right, big man. But, but, but... Bolt it today, it's no tax. Ah, that's so, it, mate. Uh, it's uh, winter's here, winter's coming. Right. Or Halloween season's oh, coming. Oh, right, spoopy season. Right. Spoopy, spoopy season. Right. We're getting started early uh, this week uh, on the uh, podcast, Trust Learn 100 Things from Every Film. John, what are we talking about? We are talking about 1981's The Howling, and when I was younger, I used to love it, and then when I watched it, rewatched it, uh, it's Howling. <laughs> <laughs> it's Balfin. It's so, so this is the first time you've seen this. Yeah, so, correct, yeah. So, I was certain I'd seen this, you know. I was adamant I'd seen this. And then I put it let's, on, let's, and I was like... Let's get your thoughts out. Let's get them out. <laughs> I have not seen a fucking frame of this, and glad of it I was too, because uh, it's so fucking boring. <laughs> It's, it's no easy at all. It's, it's so dull. It was, it was, like, it was, and the effects it was are great. Courage. And it is oh, yeah. jam-packed full of type of actors that we love, oh, isn't God, it? Yeah. It's phenomenal. Pickens and all. Oh, oh, it brilliant. is absolutely to the fucking gunnels with them. But mm. Jesus Christ, there's a load of shit in between. Stop it, talking and start anyway. werewolfing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, oh, mate, It's if, if I was still doing letterboxing, I might. It's probably a two out of five at best Ooh, and again that's one for the one for the cast one for the effects yeah i i, I totally agree yeah i used to think it was it was the, the nuts but yeah no it's just it's and bad. that really end bad. we will come to it but that fucking yeah. last oh the, <laughs> like, the end and then the postscript end oh fucking yeah hell. don't worry we've got off we've got everything we'll, 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 we'll keep you up to date in there Joe Danty, man, where did it all go right <laughs> for <laughs> him? <laughs> you know, Jesus. Thankfully, he got <laughs> he, he used to be a werewolf and he got better. Uh, I know, I have. Hmm. We've got Gramlin, did you know? Gramlin. 1981, what could we have been talking about? So, other than... Now, bearing in mind, that... John, you start to get called out by the listeners for not mentioning when there's good films and just picking shit. And no. you love it. <laughs> you love it that you're winding them up. <laughs> No, it's, it's just because my, my taste isn't normal. Because I always, oh, we I was, know that I the video <laughs> bank, so the things that I see are the one. <laughs> oh fuck! Um, so what I see is basically the things that I remember. Like I didn't, I was the, I was the for popular films. I just went with what was in the van. So right, so what we I got spit here, on your so... grave, <laughs> zombie two. <laughs> yeah, hi. Uh, right, so we've got scanners. Right, oh, scanners, is phenomenal. scanners. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, stripes. Oh, yeah, yeah stretch yeah, starts yeah. well. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no times. Um, cannonball run. Oh, I love the can. I, it's on the list. It's on the list. Yeah, yeah. Cannonball run. Um, we've got Madhouse. Madhouse. Uh, yeah. Is it is your house? My house. I. Uh, Escape from New York. That's oh, another good one. Yeah, yeah. Now you're talking. That's another good one. Et. Nineteen eighty-one. Was Et. Nineteen eighty-one. Was it eighty-two? Fucking ATT. We're we'll never doing ET. Um, and one of my favourites. This is my favourite. Uh, Mad Max Two. Oh, the Road Warrior. The Road Warrior yeah. is is the best Mad Max film. Yeah, uh, by, by far, a country by mile. Um, yeah, and, and 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 just and just to throw in a wee Scottish oh, one, uh, Outland, with Sean Connery, running a bit as a. In the a space sheriff station. Another sheriff <laughs> in the space station. I'm a yeah. sheriff from a space station. <laughs> Jesus. So there, yeah, that's a not bad year, actually, John. For no, once. No, that's you've, picked, you've picked quite a few films that I oh. enjoy and a short if, comedy if, film. If they're getting called out, uh, I thought I might as well yeah, put some effort in. You're furious, aren't you? <laughs> furious. I mean, when you're going to put that effort in, I don't know. But <laughs> like, see, see, see me not open this up. Like, there's stuff in here. Cutters Way, Reds. Uh, aftermath, all these Red stuff, Chill and Comfort, all the stuff I've seen, the fan, Madman. There's hundreds of stuff that I've seen, but I had to go with it. You want to go, go with, with the it. stuff you want to see? I had to, had to run with the hair, didn't I? 
absolutely. Uh, right, okay. So if you like what we do, give us a quid and you will get the opportunity to pick a film. Um, we have done quite a few of those recently, so the, the numbers are starting to dwindle on the wheel. So if you want to get your name on there and get ahead of somebody else, then feel free. It is, of course, extremely random. Uh, uh -huh. So we're not picking these at all. And uh, Next up is Aaron. And Aaron has picked. Uh, Aaron's given us a list, hasn't he, John? And I think we know it, what we're going to do. Right. But yeah, we're yeah, say, it was a good list. Uh, it was a good list. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. And uh, hopefully, we'll uh, we'll we'll be doing we'll be doing that in the first week of October, depending on what the, our lives. The, the, the dudes shall abide. Look like. So you can get involved uh, with that, and you get a shout out at the end of every episode. Uh, by going to 100 things we learned from film.co.uk, where you can follow us on all of our socials as well, or 100 things, uh, or patreon.com forward slash 100 things film. And it's just a quid, and you get involved. Uh, really, really good. We've had some great choices. We've had some great choices. No, no, um, no, no, no. Even Biggie picked a good film. <laughs> it's like, no. That's how good this has been. But my wife is yet to go, so we'll see what happens then. Oh I've got God. a feeling I know what it is that she wants to watch, but it, and I can't say I'm particularly excited about it. But she reckons she's is, got a list of about ten. Is is Bon Jovi in it? Is uh, it Pete Ford? Is it <laughs> is it U U five seven one? That's what is it, is it as well. And the one we did already the uh, the New Year's Eve. Oh God, yeah, but he's a rock your, star. About your ball star. drops. He's a rock star who who has loads of songs that he could have used, but sings a meatloaf song. But I'm still yeah. angry about that. It's been like four years, John. Yeah, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, right. Let's get started with the howling. Uh, so we open up with um, an Avco Embassy film. Anything on yeah. Avco Embassy? Uh, Avco, so Embassy Pictures Corporation. Uh, it was an American independent film production and distribu distribution studio active from 1942 to 1986. Mm -hmm. uh, studio Canal owns most of Embassy's theatrical library. Sony Pictures owns the uh, syndicate rights, and they also produced Escape from New York. Mm -hmm. As mentioned, yeah, previous episode. <laughs> That's what I've got. Okay, uh, The Graduate, The Producers, uh, The Producer. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, when was the last time somebody did a Ronnie Corbett impression on a podcast? No. Surely a long, long time ago. Uh, the Fog, again, another great film. Uh, mm -hmm. This uh, this is Spinal Tap and Swamp Thing. All really no, good films, actually. Those. Yeah, yeah, movies. no. Uh, uh, therefore. Bought out by Dino De Laurentiis. Remember him? <gasps> Dino De Laurentiis. <laughs> uh, De Laurentiis Pictures in 86. So that's why we are where we are. Uh, we open with this Dr. George uh, Wagner on the TV talking about how we've evolved from being primitive and forgotten our inner beast. Who was this, John? Oh, it was uh, McNee, one of the Avengers, it the was, original it Avenger. Was one, yeah, it, what, the Hulk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a suit and a bowler hat. <laughs> Throw in oh, that bowler hat. Sorry. That film that was produced by um, a guy called Daniel H. Blatt. Oh, yeah, I, I saw wrote, that, and I wrote it down and yeah. didn't look into it. Well, I, I looked at it because of Blatt. Blatt it's just, it's, Paul, it's Paul Blatt Mall Cop. <laughs> he also, <laughs> but he also produced Cujo. Mm. Cujo! Cujo! Somebody nearly gets Cujo'd in this film, by the way. Right. <laughs> I know shit. Right. Terry nearly gets Cujo'd. Uh, also starring um, uh, Dee Wallace as well. Hi. Yeah, she's OB. great, isn't she? She is really good. She's probably the best thing in she's this. She's really, really, really good, and she's uh, yeah. She's ET's ET. E she's not ET's mum. <laughs> oh, she <laughs> might be. She's Elliot's mum in ET. Um, right. Yeah, best one. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. That and, and a, a couple of other bits. Yeah, oh, Cujo's good, isn't it? Cujo is good. Cujo, I really like yeah, Cujo. Cujo. I was going to say Cujo's shit, fun. I mean. It's not because it's just that fucking Aye. child wailing for like yeah. eighty minutes. I know, but the good thing is that dog's dead now. Oh shit, that dog is dead. <laughs> yeah, that's dog's a good dead. point. And the dog in this as well. Uh, yeah, and and um, yeah. Anyway, so elsewhere in the city, Karen White uh, is approached by a man who thinks she's a prostitute, and he goes, "How much for a happy hand?" Oh yes, <laughs> Happy Hand is actually the name of our local Chinese. Uh, <laughs> oh man! Uh, he recognises her as a TV reporter. She heads to a phone box. Uh, she's wearing a wire and reporting back to these cops and her husband Bill. He's called yep. Bill Neal. 
Two first names, mate. I mean, yeah, it's been a while like since it. we've no, he didn't like them, it. But he deserves he didn't it. Like it. He no, deserves he didn't it. Like Especially it. with this jumper, this like white cardigan that he's got on. It's <laughs> yeah. something else. That's bound to go in the wash it's, with like a black sock in it. Fuck it's, it. Uh, it's a bit Starsky and Hutch, isn't it? <laughs> it's a little bit Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> <laughs> um, the signal's atrocious, though, and they lose her like almost right away. And this cop mm. goes, ah, it's all the neon down there. I was like, yep. piss off. Yes, that, the as, signs interface. As she's standing though, at the um, at the phone box, there's somebody waiting to get in, isn't there? Uh, yeah, that goes in after her. Yeah, yeah. Apparently that's somebody like it's a Roger producer who's been a, yeah, uh, been a skin flint. So yeah, yeah. the fact that he was dipping the the, 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 the money bin to see if there was any money, it's just a, it's an in-joke. Oh, Did yeah, because he was very, very oh, tight yeah. with money. Yeah. Oh, uh, R.I.P. that guy earlier uh, this year, last year, this year. Oh, yeah, only a few months ago. Uh, but no, neon light. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Red light, green light. Red light, light. green light. Uh, yeah, so neon lights do indeed um, uh, interfere with it. So, yeah, films aren't always lying to us. Um, Eddie calls the box, his character Eddie, that she's trying to get in touch with, and he tells her to go to this porno shop. Um, she heads into this video room in the back of the shop where there's this snuff film playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you see the smiley face? I did. The smiley face stickers, yeah. Yeah, so I looked at the name. So yellow smiley faces were invented by nineteen in 1963 by Harvey Ball. Have you heard about uh, this guy? Um, I'm pretty sure we covered him at some point, but go on. But, uh, so he was a graphic designer, but it was, he was commissioned to make it by the um, State Mutual Life Association Company or something like that because they needed a, 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 a morale boost because the employees were merging and there was acquisitions, so nobody felt... At ease at this company, so that it's, it's to pretty much make a, a symbol. So he made that, but he only got paid forty five dollars for it. Oh, what? It's pretty much the acid face. Absolutely, isn't it? it is. Um, and, a, and another wee thing is that smiley face is also in Gremlins. So, and because one of the actors in it is in the Gremlins, they think it's based in the same universe. All oh, right. Okay. Oh, Who very knew? good. But yeah, but the 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 actor's a different character. In it. mm-hmm. It's the same. the The actor in this is the same character same in, in Chopping Mall. We did the Chopping, chopping. Mall. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, the only thing I remember us doing about a smiley face was the Have a Nice Day smiley face. Remember when you said it was invented by? I was like, please say Forrest Gump. Please say Forrest Gump. <laughs> Go for it. That's Forrest Gump. Hey man, <laughs> I need help with a t shirt. Oh, I'm still angry about that. That muddy faced. <sighs> oh, it does your text in, doesn't it? Oh, it just makes me so mad. It makes me mad. Um, yeah. um, she takes this this seat, and behind us is character Eddie. Uh, you're different to them. I know how good I can make you feel. I want to give you something. And he grabs her, and she screams. There's these mm-hmm. cops that have been fo- looking for her, and they're in the shop uh, talking to the owner. And the owner is like the most New York man ever. Yeah, there's a broad, and this is sticking the place out. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, fucking hell. He was fucking bad there. I'm walking, <laughs> watching porn I'm, here. I'm, I'm selling porn away. <laughs> uh, they head in, and the young cop absolutely blows him away. Blam up. He did, yeah. <laughs> and he, he comes in and he goes, I knew I shouldn't have let that broad in here. <laughs> no, I'm Fuck. We can do it there. Do you expect him to demand a, a plane of Gabba Magool? <laughs> um, we learn that Eddie didn't have a weapon and they shouldn't have shot. The, yep. the old cop says, "Don't blame me. Blame Quick Draw McGraw here." <laughs> no, he Quick Draw won't. McGraw, of course, cartoon horse and a sheriff. Yep. Never really understood that. <laughs> nah, I didn't get it either. I didn't um, get it either. Hannah, uh, tw- oh, 25, 25 cents to watch a porno, though. Oh, was that how much it was? Yeah, twenty-five cents is t- and equates to. Well, that doesn't seem right. So now it equates to. 89 cents, okay. but I don't think you'd be able to watch a porno for 89 cents. You can watch it for free, mate. The internet, I know, you've got, you've got <laughs> I don't like know. the internet, and you, you, you know, the, the adult password number, yeah, that your and, wife's and you put on the internet, and you don't declare that you're under 18. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah, I, I'm under 18 and I accept cookies. <laughs> don't get caught with that trap. <laughs> Villainous girls. Uh, oh, I don't. Villainous <laughs> girls. Uh, back to quick draw McGraw if I can, John. If it's not yeah, right yeah, by you. Uh, <laughs> Hannah Barbera character. First film was Lamb Chopped in 
Uh, I love the fact that you're griping about how you couldn't get porn for 89 cents anymore. That's Biden's America, that, telling you. No, it's that. No, he ruined it. Oh, hey, man, I'm, <laughs> I'm leaving office, man. Uh, never really got my Biden <laughs> down. Never got my Biden down. Yeah. It's all right, because that big orange fucking flump's going to be back in next year. And nah. I can do, I can do nah. a relatively passable one. I am not <laughs> going to do a Kamala Harris impression, listeners. I, I refuse to do a female president of colour impression because... Yeah. That's just that's, that, yeah. That's that's, that's what ends the podcast. Yeah, after, yeah, after yeah. four or five long years. <laughs> Your message don't fire is bad enough now. Maybe <laughs> potentially next period. Oh, maybe I should just do Kamala Harris. Mrs. Doubtfire. No. <laughs> Hello, press office. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bill and the detectives arrive and they ask Karen what happened, but she doesn't remember. It's the classic, isn't it? You know, like you ask a child what what happened here, what's what going on here. Uh-huh. I don't remember. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't here. Evil. Don't remember. Okay. Evasive. That's what that is. Uh, Terry and Chris are two other reporters. Terry and Chris are never properly introduced. Yeah. It, and we they just really good we characters as well. Learn little bits about them yeah. as the thing goes on. And and I guess that's good. That's kind of good storytelling. Uh huh. But the second time watching it, I was like, right, okay, I'm going to say who they are and what it is they do and what they're doing. But they're just like they're there to push the story along, which I, I, yep. again isn't a bad thing. Yeah, but, but it felt a little more bit like them. they didn't have any fun. Like <laughs> I no. know they were watching the Wolfman a bit later on. And that's no. pretty good. And, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. They, they get to go and meet uh, um, you know the bloke that doesn't like foreign cars <laughs> and robots <laughs> in shopping malls. You know, they get to go and meet him. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't feel like they're doing anything. Yeah, apart from it. well, she's she's lucky. Well, I say that she's lucky, but in the last the flash film I seen her in this was um, Piranha. Oh yeah, because so she's, again she's another John Landis a, film. She she's gets... stuck behind the, the, in between a Piranha and a bloody werewolf. What yeah. chance does she stand? <laughs> uh, a true screen queen, if ever there was. She's not, a, she's not an animal lover. I tell you that. On the case of Eddie, they go to his apartment. By the way, talk about fucking oh, rundown. It's oh, grim, God, isn't it? It's grim. It looks it's like really something bad. out of Death Wish Three. <laughs> it's pretty bad, isn't it? It's a hovel. And Terry nearly gets cujoed with this dog that comes through the window to eat her face. But my God, she gave it some, didn't she? Oh, she yeah. fucking loves yeah. it. She, yeah, it's get out of here. Some good acting. <laughs> uh, the drawings, there's all these drawings on the walls. The drawings include um one of Karen as well. And the line is this guy could draw a Marquis de Sade colouring book. Which oddly doesn't, I didn't think existed till I found one and put it on my Amazon wish list. It doesn't exist. What? It doesn't exist. No. Um, I wish he had created it. Uh, she also finds a drawing of this secluded bay. Um, mm. Talking to Dr. Wagner, uh, he tells Terry and Chris it's, <laughs> it's not unusual uh, for a killer to draw well. Do, 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 do. <laughs> you know what he did? They ask him to say it all on camera. Uh, for a special that they're doing on Eddie. And his name is Eddie Quist. Yep. Um, Karen and Neil are in, in bed. Uh, uh, sorry, Karen and Bill. Bill Neil, isn't it? Karen and Bill are in bed. And he tries it on, but she's absolutely not up for it. Understandable. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. Just watch the rape just scene and got the... attacked. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometime later. But, but, uh, but at least he paid for the porn, no? 25 cents. <laughs> I mean. Exactly. Absolutely. The guy's got, the guy's He's, got standards. I mean, it's just some first date. I know. Why watch some porn? <laughs> uh, some time later, because you're never really clear how long's passed. Karen's back on TV. The lead for this show, by the way, is the most chipper human being that's ever oh, existed. God, and I. it doesn't match the stories at all. Today's top no. stories, official reaction to chemical fire. Uh, 14 it, injured it's... in Rockaway train derailment. And here's your host, assaulted by a werewolf in the back of a pawn shop. It's Karen White. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The lights come up. Karen freezes. uh, They go to a report about the chemical fire. Um, I'm not saying the boss is really chauvinistic arsehole, but he blames it. Oh, oh, probably she's probably pregnant. I was like, I know. By the way, the star of another Dante film uh, in uh, this this boss. He's uh, he's the he's the bad guy in inner space, you know. Uh, who gets, yeah, yeah, who gets uh, yeah, sunk yeah. down. Yeah. So and Tangmi's in it as well. It, he uh, is Richard. indeed. Right. Yeah, Picardo's in it as well. In Wagner's office, he's telling Karen not to be afraid of dreams. She says she remembers nothing of the attack in the shop. Um, 
I was busy here looking at the picture on the wall. He had a, a painting of a print of the Scream, Edvard Munch's Scream. Yeah, yeah, which mm-hmm. is one of my favourite paintings. Uh, it's been stolen twice. Well, what? two different versions because there's about eight versions of it. Because obviously the guy liked money, which is fair enough. You shouldn't die a penniless artist. What he liked money? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's some eyebrow gaggerage there. Well, yeah. oh, mate, do more of these on a Friday night. <laughs> On the 12th of February 1994, the same day as the opening of the 1994 Winter Olympics in Lillehammer, two men mm-hmm. broke into the National Gallery in Oslo and stole its version of the screen, leaving a note reading, thanks for the poor security. Oh, nice. They were still watching the luge, weren't they? <laughs> Can't blame them. Hey. Uh, the 1910 version of the screen was stolen on the 22nd of August 2004. It's like almost a year, uh, 10 years later. During daylight hours, when mass gunmen entered the Munch Museum in Oslo and stole it along with Munch's Madonna. No way. And Munch's box. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> As if, was there any mint Munchies? <laughs> <laughs> it was a Madonna with the fallen boobies. <laughs> oh, Again, I miss, miss you, Renny. References oh, for old no. people. Oh, Renny. Oh, no. <laughs> I will say this early beds. <laughs> Good morning. It's fucking awful. <laughs> it's really racist, that. Oh, I know, but it's not acceptable. I, 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 I watched about watch 20 it. minutes of one a couple of years ago. Oh, and thought, what, right. is, what is happening here? Yeah, flick. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, both of them have been recovered, by the way. Uh, they didn't just stay stolen. Uh, I mean, they're not very good at security in um, in Norway, but they are quite good at being cops, I guess. Yeah. And being attacking footballers. She, she explains Bill, and, and she can't connect properly since the attack. He tells her to visit yep. the colony, which is where they, which is where they can connect, do seminars, and generally find themselves. Oh, we've all heard that, haven't we? Mate, the colony. <laughs> it's, I know. It's like fucking ants all over again, isn't it? Uh, I think we've got to go to Jamestown there. But... <laughs> 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 Let's go the, there is a little bit at the end where he goes, right. He goes. it's like a, it's like Guyana. And I was like, <laughs> mate, I Ooh. fucking want to do the Jamestown facts. And considering how few facts we've got, I wish I'd found time to do some. But we Ooh. all know, come on, you don't listen to this podcast. You don't listen to podcasts and have not listened to a true crime podcast on Jamestown. Do that. Oh, killing. Oh. So sad, so sad. So many kids. Do that anyway. Uh, when they get there, it's basically a summer camp for adults, isn't it? It's like fucking butlins. Some amount of fucking weirdos, though, aren't there? <laughs> I mean, Honestly, go on. There's this, there's this barbecue on the beach. Uh, this bloke's yep. like, "Do you want some of this?" And Bill's like, "Oh, I don't eat meat." Okay. Uh, Donna's this lovely klutzy girl that attaches herself to Karen, and she says, "Huh." Yeah, straight away. Yeah, she, oh, yeah, she's straight away. Right, you? You're our second favourite news reporter. The other's that Oriental girl. Uh, Oriental girl isn't the preferred non culture dude. Nope. <laughs> uh, we meet loads of others. Uh, Charlie's this cattle farmer and a big wheel at the colony, su- supplies all the meat. Uh, Bill talks to Marsha, who's this weird, sexy character. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, his line is, I'm looking for my wife. And she just goes, why? <laughs> I know. It's I'm like, good. Come on. It's quite good. <laughs> They're talking and the doctor says, oh, Marsh is a very elemental person. It's all that natural energy. It's just unchanneled. And the other lassie's like, she's a nymphomaniac. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Hypersexuality, listeners, he says, not looking at John, is a mental disorder that causes unwanted or excessive sexual arousal, causing people to engage in or think about sexual activity to a point of distress or impairment. Ooh. <laughs> How are you made to do dishes in that condition? That's all right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nymphomaniac, maniac on the floor. Um, that's the last time we'll talk about nymphomaniacs until we do both Nymphomaniac Part 1 and Part 2 for the podcast, which we're not doing, <laughs> by the way. God. We're not doing. Uh, John Carradine is Weird Earl. John Carradine, of course, is yeah. a man of many, many, many movies. Um, many, he tries many. to throw himself in this fire. Uh, he's going, oh, my teeth are shot. Uh, too much goat or something, isn't he? It's like, what? <laughs> what is this? 
Uh, the doctor stops him and tells him, get a good night's sleep. There's a good boy. There's a good boy. Um, I've seen him before in Star Slammers, which is this sexy, quote unquote, sexy sci-fi film that I did on Hallmark of Greatness. Oh, um, aye. And his son was uh, Sfixy Wank Kill Bill star David. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, uh, Davey? And, he, of course, uh, Frankenstein. He's not a werewolf, but he's a Frankenstein. In he's Death Race 2000. Man, Death Race 2000 is a good Roger Corman film. Aye. Yeah, yeah, no, devil. It's worth a punt, isn't it? And, and that, remakes, that remake's pretty fun as well. You know, the Snyder uh, one with Lovejoy yeah, yeah. in it. I liked it. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the rest with Luke Goss. Now we, we watched the second one with Luke Goss a while ago after we'd watched the first one. And it's cheap as shit, and you can tell that they're reusing the card bits from the first aye, one. From the original but, film, aye. Yeah, it's... It, yeah, no, the first one was good. Yeah, the, f- the, yeah, the first one. Well, yeah, you, you get what you... Great pay. cast. Yeah, really good cast. <laughs> great cast. <laughs> you get what you pay for. That's what I'd say. You get what you pay for with Luke Goss. Oh, God, aye. I mean, when, Goss. John, when will he be famous? He'll be famous. <laughs> I can't answer that. I can't answer Only that. Only recently <laughs> did I realise... So I read a thing saying that that, that, that is... Um, like it's a two-part thing. It's when will I be famous, and that I can't answer that is meant to be their agent saying I can't answer that. I never got. Oh that. really? Yeah, I never. Got that. That. No, it's been like thirty years since that song came out. Jesus, he was doing alright as well, and then he just disappeared. He's um, he's in Hellboy, and he? he's Hellboy too. Hellboy. That's yeah, a good Hellboy. movie. That one. It's better than the first. A really one. good movie. Uh, I I really enjoyed yeah. it, and he was um, one of the baddies in Blade Two. Yes, yes, yeah, so he is. Really good in that as well. Yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah, okay. That documentary is meant to be good. That Bross documentary. I've, I've seen, seen it. it. Is it I've good? It. Is it really good? Uh, it's really is good. it? Oh, I've Matt got to watch come, that. Matt comes across as an absolute fucking buffoon. Does he? But, oh, I've uh, got to watch that. <laughs> I but, watch yeah. it. Get it watched. Because say Get what you me. want about Bross. I mean, you know, they're not my cup of tea, but it's it's interesting, isn't it? It's an interesting Oh, I, yeah, thing. yeah. What devil. There's a film here somewhere, listeners. Yep. Um, uh, later that night, Bill and Karen are sleeping and she's woken up by howling, which sounds like it was performed on two slightly detuned synthesizers. Alan Rickman. Of course. <laughs> uh, Bill, it's the country. You were raised in LA. The wildest thing you ever heard was Wolfman Jack. Uh, Wolfman Jack, uh, famous... Uh, disc jockey in disc LA. Disc jockey, I know. We're doing the same thing there. Disc yeah. jockey. Disc jockey. <laughs> in LA. Loads more on him, but nothing exciting enough. You know, every time you see something on The Simpsons, they're parodying Wolfman Jack. Aye. That's the, yeah. That's Although he did, he died quite young, 57. Oh, right. I missed that. Uh, oh, yeah. that is, uh, wait, so is really Astonishingly, drop? so did Slim Pickens. I know you're not going to believe this. He was 59 mm-hmm. at this point. <laughs> Fuck off. He looks atrocious, doesn't he's he? He's terrible, he man. Looks, mate, if I, although, to be honest, if I look like that at 59, I'm doing all right. <laughs> so I looked him up, and it says, um, so Slim Pickens was a real cowboy, like a proper cowboy. Oh, right, like a, an old so, Western guy. I get yeah, like a, a proper hand, ranch hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, so just say Slim Pickens spent his early part of his career as a real cowboy, and then his latter part of his life playing a cowboy. <laughs> in, in, indeed he did. Yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, not his real name, of course. Why, John? Why must films? Why? Lose? Why? Um, <clears throat> the next morning, they're they're playing um, tennis. Uh, Karen yeah. and Donna and Slim Sam, the local sheriff, arrives. It's Slim Pickens, and he blames the noise on coyotes. Um, I was really disappointed at this bit. He didn't ask them to sing the Camp Town Ladies. Oh. The Camp Town Ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I get no kick from champagne. <laughs> Fucking great movie. Oh, God, I watch it like once a year and it's still nah. not enough. It's one of those I feel like I need it to watch it more. Time and I know time. it's been on the list for a long, long time. But listeners, just a bit of a hint. We've definitely got a Mel Brooks coming up oh, yeah. soon. Yeah. Uh, You're going to love it. I've just, shown a, DVD, I've just shown a, cl- <laughs> a, a, a standard definition DVD to John uh, and he's not going to tell. <laughs> that is that's that's that is one of my favourites. Yeah, I, I prefer the one we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 36-minute um, yeah, yeah. documentary on the making of behind the scenes Mexican interviews. I mean, what? If you have this DVD, you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, anyway, aye, aye, aye. that's coming. 
<laughs> Scooby Dicks. Like the guy at the end of this thing, he's like, oh, the lady has turned into a werewolf. <laughs> oh, no. That guy. I was like, what? Who are you? I know. It's like the end of, I was, I'd see the end of this, it's like watching the end of the Truman, the Truman Show, in it? Mm. <laughs> All everybody's in these reactions. I thought it was a little bit like watching the end of They Live. Oh, you, know, I... you know the bit where it's like when they all see that the aliens are actual mm. aliens, including the guy that's having sex. <laughs> I... oh. uh, Terry and Chris head to the coroner to see the body of Eddie. Uh, and <laughs> the, the coroner, he thinks he's such a like a, he's, he's having such japes, isn't he? Oh, I he really that, thinks he's... he's in that night shift film with Henry Winkler. <laughs> <Michael> <laughs> he really does, doesn't he? he? Good One film, the cool by guys. the way. Fun film, that. Really oh, no, good. it's good. Yeah, I've really, really enjoyed good it. film. Right. Um, and there's just loads of scrape marks on the fridge. He knocks, doesn't he? Uh, hello, Mr. Mr. Quist. And like, I, I have absolutely no idea where it's gone. <laughs> uh, back at the colony, the girls come across a mutilated cow on the night. So the next day, Bill, and I've just called them the good old boys, um, head off on a coyote shoot. This forest they're hunting in, by the way, looks like they're in the forest moon of Endor. <laughs> Aye, if, going because on they here? start off all right, and then it just becomes this congested trees yeah. broken everywhere. It's like, where the hell they've been? I honestly expected it to be like um, that the Sound of Thunder film. You know, the one where if you go back in time and you stamp on a, a, a butterfly, <laughs> it, it, oh. it turns the world into monkey people. You see, that's <laughs> terrible, isn't it? That yeah. awful film. A good book, <laughs> If, if that is what I'm thinking of. Listeners, you know me by now. Directors. I do yeah. not know what any films... I conflate so <laughs> many films. Uh, some point we will do 40 Days of forty days and Nights, which I think is the one where vampires uh, take uh, your man out of Trap's virginity or something. Yeah. 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 The, the poppy cherry. I, I enjoyed that as well, yeah. Enjoyed what, the, the vampires one or the popping the cherry one? Oh, the same film. No, the, vampire. the same film. <laughs> same same one. film. Uh, one of those films I've seen. One I haven't. Have you seen Trap, John? Yep, seen it. Fucking great film. He's yeah, back. He's, good, he's back. Just, just an area, M. Night's uh, back. He's so good. And I don't care who knows it. Fuck, you'll fuck up the next one, though. <sighs> four four plans. He knows, he knows every film he's doing four in advance. Oh, really? He always knows his four films in advance. So, it'll be trapped, untrapped, spinal trap. No, no, trap. no, not spinal <laughs> trap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Yeah, oh. yeah. Always on, big man. Always on. Always, always on. on. <laughs> Does this trap go up to 11? <laughs> uh, perhaps Ewoks killed the cow. I don't know, but Bill shoots a rabbit. Uh, in some sort of hypnotherapy session, uh, the doctor's doing with Karen, and for some reason Donna's there too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I thought that'd be private, she's but obviously way not. Right in, ain't she? Right. So many. Um, she can't remember what she saw. Uh, back in the city, Terry and Chris are at Ray's Books of the Occult. Oh no, hang on, Walter Paisley's shop. Uh, hello, <laughs> Ray's Occult. <laughs> We buy books. We buy books. <laughs> <laughs> Just go there. We buy books. Yeah. <laughs> dot com. We buy books. Dot com. <laughs> uh, Dick Miller, we've mentioned, of course, from the, uh, from the movie Chopping Mall. He's playing the same character, or certainly the same named character. Uh, this was his favourite. This was his absolute favourite of all of his roles. That's because he had a, a, a proper part. Uh, the rest of them was just wee bits of it. Oh, it's I don't know. Gremlins is a pretty meaty role. Mm, true. And Gremlins too, yeah. the new batch. Which I watched recently, and it's so good. Oh, it really is. It's good. so much fun. Uh, yeah, too many references for this for one podcast. Uh, he explains he's got black candles and silver bullets. Oh, uh, in many go. traditions, black candles are used for protection and banishing negative energy. I could fucking do with some of them. Uh, they're believed to absorb negative influences and ward off malevolent forces. There you go. They don't want any of those, though. They just want some books on werewolves. Uh, Marsha has this idiot brother, right? That's basically Adrian Brody's character in the village. Isn't he? You know, like, I'm expecting him to kind Aye. of end up, like, murdering somebody. Um, says that killing an animal you don't eat is a sin. And she sends Bill to Marsha. She'll clean the wabbits and cook them up. <laughs> uh, she doesn't, though. Instead, she gans in for the big kiss. Oh, I yeah, she did, didn't she? Uh, he pushes her off and walks back to the caravan of courage or wherever they are. 
Uh, but before he can get there, he's attacked by a wild beast. Uh, the doctor gives him an injection and said the bite is serious and that they shouldn't travel. How convenient. Uh, in bed, Chris and Terry are watching The Wolfman and reading the book they bought when Karen calls and explains that Bill's been bitten. Terry says she's going to go, but Chris is wanting to do more work before he joins uh, I know. Them. I thought, mm. uh, The Wolfman, 1941, Lon Chaney, Claude Rains and Bela Lugosi film. Pull this drink. Uh, <laughs> in The Wolfman, the entirety of the makeup took five to six hours to apply and an hour to remove, right? But on this making of thing I saw for the howling, Picardo said, one day after spending six and a half hours in the makeup chair, I was thinking, trained at Yale, two leading roles on Broadway, my first acting role in California, my face gets melted in a low-budget horror movie. And all the crew had to say was, Bob, next time, read the script all the way through <laughs> that's, first. I've seen that. I've seen that. That's, that's, that's brilliant. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Absolutely brilliant. Oh. Uh, Karen gets Terry up uh, to speed on everything happening. Terry apologises to Bill because she didn't bring any veggies for him to eat. And he's just chowing down on like a yes. fucking goat leg or something. It looks like oh, Disneyland. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It looks delicious, though. It looks so tasty. Oh, God, I... Uh, that night, Karen tries to get Bill um, to do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> uh, and he says the injections made him too tired. Uh, Karen has a Ooh. nightmare and wakes up in bed without Bill. He's headed off into the woods where he does a sex with Marsha. And we get some you boobies. Do, we never get boobies yeah. in this podcast. Yeah, yeah it was, it's our only full frontal. That's Is only, it? The only uh, dying it's in Shadana. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What's up that? At the end, they both morph into werewolves. The transformations are good, but for me, they're not American werewolf good. Uh, I there's, there's definitely some kind of matte painting animation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there is. Um, yeah, and the, uh, um, as, as, it, as it goes up. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't dislike that. I think that's good. But the for me, I think the the, the way that American Wolf in London wins is less is more. Like you see saw... a lot less of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, you see it in in shorter bursts than you do. Yeah. This, and also you see it in like bright blazing, like lights, don't you? So it looks really good. You can't get away with that. Just filming it all in the dark and making it muddy shit. Aye, yeah, no, totally. Like that they do now um, in CGI. I'm looking at I you, know Wonder Woman '84. <laughs> I'm looking at you, kid. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure they got. Who has it done the, the special effects for? Oh, uh, I've definitely got something on that somewhere. Um, Rick Rick Baker. No, Rick Baker was the original guy to be doing it. Uh, he quit to go and do American Werewolf in London, and instead it was. Oh God, it's here somewhere. Why, Rob John? Bottom. Why must I lose all my places? Uh, Rob Bottin. Rob Bottin. Yep. Yeah, so he, but, but I, but apparently, I, so he was on, Rick ba- Baker was doing it. Mm-hmm. He stepped out and then Rob Bottom was his number two, yeah. so he took over. But he, um, he was the one that done the special effects for Robocop. Oh, right. And, oh, I didn't and know. And the that. thing. So, uh, as soon as I and seen Rob thing. Bottom, I was like, oh, wow. And the thing, eh? wow. Yeah, yeah, so. Okay. Rings and, uh, yeah, credit, credit where it's due. Well, both of them, both of them got um, awarded for the special effects. So even right now, we're going, man, that was not that good. But back in the day, yeah, was, yeah, um, the, yeah, they were like and neck edge. and neck. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good old Rob Button. <laughs> Rob Button cop. Uh, next, going, we yeah. don't need. <clears throat> next morning, Terry's hiking and checking the view in relation to the picture that she found. It's the exact same view. She heads into the woods where she hears something whisper her name. She follows the sound to some gingerbread house, question mark. Yeah. Uh, when she goes inside, it's the doctor's place. She uh, hears the voices, doesn't she? Yeah. Dairy. Yeah. Uh, there's more drawings on the walls. It's not the doctor's place, that's later on. There's more drawings on the walls. Um, mm-hmm. She takes photos of until she gets chased out by a werewolf. Um, she hides in a woodshed and picks up this hatchet, which she uses to chop off the arm of the werewolf. Yeah. Oh, well hang on. No, it's there a hand axe specifically for chopping off. Oh, hands. I see that there. Yeah. Uh, the wolf flees, but the hand continues to twitch and convulse and turn, until it turns into a human hand. She runs for it, makes it to the doctor's office and calls Chris. Back in their cabin, Karen uh, spots scratches on Bill's back and accuses him of sleeping with Marsha. He gives her a right old slap in, doesn't he? All right. Because it's 1981. Right. Um, yep. And she says she's going to the doctor's office to call Chris 
to get her and bring her home. Terry's getting Chris up to date on what's happened over the phone. He tells her to check the files for Eddie Quist. She finds Marsha, TC Quist and Hedy. And she takes the Eddie file out. And as she's doing it, this werewolf sat on the top of it. And it's almost like she just hands it to him. Hands it and it, <laughs> it takes it off. Like, oh, and the funny. werewolf's like, thank you. <laughs> uh, there's this bit of a scrap. And the wolf picks her up. Like, and, like you get like the little waggling feet, don't you? Kind yeah, shot, yeah, yeah. Uh, and bites her neck till she stops struggling. Uh, back at the occult shop, Chris is buying the silver bullets. And he's going, hey, I don't even know how much I should be charging for those because <laughs> it's silver. It's like, <laughs> Say, just money, me. <laughs> I'm going to start doing that in shops. <laughs> nah, I just throw money, didn't Morgan phone stuff. me? Yeah. Uh, in the doctor's office, Karen finds Terry's body with her neck torn out. She goes to use the phone, but she's grabbed by the cowboy from inner space. Yeah. Quist. Uh, he said he wants to show her who he really is. Now, he takes this thing out of his skull, right? Which I assume was a bullet from earlier on. I think, yeah, I'm assuming it was. It looks like R2 D2's good. restraining bolt out of a new yeah, hope, it was, doesn't it? it takes the restraining huge. bolt off, and <laughs> then he's just a werewolf. It's, it is good effects, and it won a Saturn Award. Yep. Yeah, yeah. As we've discussed. Um, Rick Baker was the original effects artist, as we've said, left the production to work on American Wolf in London, which released the same year as The Howling. Uh, we've got all that already, so I can't do anything with that. Uh, Chris is trying to get fuel as he makes way. It, rushing this guy at the pump who has the hilarious line of, Whoa, buddy, not all of us have money for a Mazda. A Mazda? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, I don't what? know. A Mazda, yeah. dear? That was a 1979 Mazda RX-7. It was a fucking beaut, by the way. It was good. I, as, um, the BMW was quite good as well with the sunroof. Oh, yeah, it was BMW. sexy. Yeah. So it was um, uh, BMW 2 528i. Uh, okay, cool, cool. From 1980. And the good old boys show up and take Karen to this barn where everyone's waiting, including the Doctor. The Doctor explains they're all werewolves. Ah, we're all werewolves. Nah, and bro, the Doctor helps, bro, bro friends here. helps them adjust. <laughs> if she accepts this gift, she can join them. Old Earl says they shouldn't be feeding on cattle, they should just be feeding on humans. But the Doctor says they can fit in this way. Marsha is having none of it. She's just like, ah, she's ours now. And they just bray him down, don't they, the Doctor? Oh, Give him a good old scratching. Fuck right. <laughs> we see that Adrian Brody brother was the one that had his hand cut off. Mm -hmm. In the director's office, Chris has arrived and sees the blood and mess. He picks up the files and is attacked by Eddie, who grabs his rifle. Eddie says Terry's with the rest of them at the quote-unquote ritual centre, where the Doc, quote-unquote, sends them to unwind... <laughs> 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 he hands the rifle back to Chris call it a gift come on you got a free shot and of course he does it with silver bullets and murders him and, and kills him Yeah, uh, that's double it. shot as well though that's yeah it, completely unnecessary do you not know how much these silver bullets are I mean hmm. he doesn't know how much they are neither does the bloke who sold them So exactly <laughs> Chris makes it to the barn and Blamo's TC quest which confuses the rest of them. They're like, bullshit, get up, Quist. <laughs> He's like, ah, nope. No. The doctor did. Chris and also <laughs> gets did. shot. He shoots him in the stomach and he drops to the ground because, thank God. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You're a man of science. What are you thanking God for? <laughs> uh, Chris and Karen trap the now changing werewolves in the barn and set fire to the place. Uh, barn yeah. of Screaming Werewolves, John, I think's a band I saw at King Tut's back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> they flee in the very expensive master. Um, they stop the car when they see Sheriff Sam. Again, completely wasted. We've got like two lines in this, isn't it? I know. Two or three lines. Yeah. Pointless. Uh... Uh, and he just starts shooting up the car. Chris gets him, though, only for them to be surrounded by the wolves that have got out of the fiery boat. One of them gets through the back windscreen and bites Karen, but Chris shoots it. Mm -hmm. We see Bill's corpse on the back seat. Uh, Karen says they have to warn people. They have to believe. Uh, yeah. Back at the station, Karen's ready to go on air and they introduce her as an eyewitness to the fire that started at the compound. <laughs> uh, she reads out her own story, but not off the auto prompt. It's it's real kind of That's like uh, uh, Ron Burgundy stuff, this, isn't I know. it? <laughs> uh, she explains there's a secret society and that she has proof and she'll show them to make them believe. She screams, it turns into a howl and she starts changing. Fucking hell, John. It, like, 
the wolves from earlier look fantastic. Yeah. But she basically turns into my cat Rogue, doesn't she? Yeah, <laughs> She's a little sure. Rogue. I was reading a bit. Did you, did you read about the the end yet? Uh, so a they, little bit, uh, yeah. So they, they'd literally ran out of money and had to do that whole sequence in somebody's office. In the director's office. Aye. So I'm like, and, what the hell? But the noise. She just goes. <laughs> yeah. I know. You know, like the noise. You know, in the Fly Two, where the evil mm-hmm. boss gets put in the machine and they turn him into that. Oh, like, that thing! Like, yeah, and he's going the metal. That, that, yeah. that noise, oh, and she's got like a wet nose. Come on, mate, so blammo! Just fucking. <laughs> just get oh, it's just the worst ending. Because I sat and watched it for the first time. Have I missed something here? And I took it back and watched it again. Mm-hmm. What? But you're right. It's so close it's up. So, like it I is know, real right, tight close. Aye, it's right. Aye, you can see this. It just doesn't oh, work. It's just it doesn't bad, work. Bad. <laughs> uh, ruins it. Well, well, I say it ruins it. This next bit ruins it. At a bar later, this bloke, they're talking, aren't they? And this bloke's like, yeah, I definitely saw it happen. He's like, yeah, but you were hammered. He's like, yeah. And this guy's like, I'll have a pepper steak, please. And a mm-hmm. burger for my lady. How do you want it, honey? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's much. Yeah. And we get mm-hmm. credits over the cooking of this fucking burger that just mm-hmm. looking at it gave me diarrhea. I'm not kidding. It's <laughs> fucking it best, gross. It? gross. Yeah. That's when they went switch your party five or something like that. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It looked like, uh, like a, a quick save one, didn't it? Oh, it was bad. Neto, something <laughs> like that. Uh yeah, it was bad. That's it. And that yeah, thankfully is is the end of that movie. <laughs> what I'm probably gonna end up being our shortest episode in a long, long time. Uh yeah. that isn't that it wasn't live. <laughs> we could have done this live. Uh but then I wouldn't <laughs> want to talk about boobies in front of uh, twelve year old cosplayers. Boobies <laughs> Oh, at least we would have got more laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> I know, huh? Uh do you have any more facts? Uh, just a rifle, so I've got a Remington model 960, mm-hmm. uh, Savage 99C, and a Winchester model 70 Super Grade. Uh, Walter Cronkite was an American broadcaster, as he, yeah. he was mentioned, wasn't he? Uh, and journalist who served as an anchor man for CBS Evening News for 19 years from 1962 to 1981. And in uh, 1584, uh, Reginald Scott recorded that people carried rabbit's feet. Um, to ward off evil spirits. So that's I was looking at why why rabbits are so lucky. Ah, but right. basically from there's there's loads of different aspects of it, but in England or in Britain, uh, apparently it was started by this Reginald Scott who pretty much said that he'd seen it in other countries and it warded off evil spirits. All right, okay, fantastic. There you go. Good stuff. I have got um cost. One point five million dollars budget and made seventeen point nine million uh, domestic United States and Canada. Uh, D. Wallace and Christopher Stone were engaged in real life during filming. What uh, really? You know, uh, Joe Dante said uh, Rob Bottom was a perfectionist. He spent the entire first day of the transformation of actor Robert Picardo putting makeup on him to the point where they couldn't actually film anything because they had to send the crew home and avoid overtime. Oh, fuck's sake. Uh, it also meant Picardo <laughs> had to stay in his wolf makeup overnight. <laughs> Jesus. And they filmed it the next morning. There you go. Uh, that is all I've got, I think. Let me just quickly scroll back up to the top because I know I had some bits. Uh, the Howling is a 1977 horror novel by Gary Bradner. It's 190 pages. And this, uh, the story of the book is more like The Howling 3. Three. Yeah, yeah. Go. So, so there you go. I might, might actually watch it. Yeah, I might do. Yeah, in fact, yeah, I, I do fancy it. reading it. I'm not reading a lot at the minute, but I do fancy it. Anyway. Uh, right, how many do you think? <laughs> how many do you oh, think we got? Hell. Uh, 58. <laughs> Piss off. Hang on. 10, 20. 55, 6, 7, 8. 58. Fuck off. <laughs> What? Really? <laughs> oh! Oh my god, Tess. You can no, count them if me. you want. Unless they just showed me it. No, no, I can see it. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, oh, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
Yeah. Fucking hell. Wow. Oh, well, that's, that's a little amazing. bit more fun, isn't it? There you go. Who wants 100? <laughs> Who wants 100 when you get 58 things about my fucking cat getting blammoed at the end of a film? <laughs> uh, right, okay. Yeah, if you like what we do, give it if you fucking like what we give do. Give us your fucking money. Get, give us a quid uh, and we will shout you out. A uh, lovely bunch of human beings. Uh, James and Joe from Hallmark of Greatness. This week, John, do you remember Time Commanders? It used to be on BBC Two. It was like Rome Total War, and they used to get twats that work together and make them uh, reenact a TV uh, on the TV, like a Rome Total War, like Battle of Stamford Bridge or right. Battle of no, a- no. Adrianople and all that kind of stuff. Well, it was no. shit, and it was on BBC Two, <laughs> and it was hosted by Eddie Mayer. Do you remember him? <laughs> Mate, I yeah, really uh, yeah. so we did an episode of that where some uh, councillors from Milton Keynes make a right cunt of it. Uh, go and listen to that on Hallmark of Greatness. That was great fun to do. <laughs> uh, Candy, Oodles, Stig, Biggie and Gadget, uh, who are on the Modern Escapism podcast. Kieran, Jake, uh, lovely Rob Jones. Congratulations on the new job. Can't wait to hear more about that. Um uh, Jen and James, really, really sorry for your loss, Jen and James. Uh, your dad was a fantastic human being, uh, so hope you are feeling a little bit better. Uh, Megan, Dale, Ali, uh, Maria and Ian of Cult Connections. Uh, Paul from SP Film Viewers. Ian McComish. Nigel, uh, I'm, I was drinking beer out of my uh, 100 Things Frosted oh, Glass Stein yeah, yeah. uh, the other yeah, day yeah. that Nigel gave us at the at the show. Very grateful. Uh, Dan and Gavin Belson. Aaron, who's going to be next to, who's, who spun the wheel, is going to be next to pick for us. Um, we have got uh, Mono and Kira, uh, Gav McGill, uh, Josh Wilson, lovely Josh Wilson. Uh, Rachel, of course, my uh, long suffering wife uh, who really likes this film, and Phil Farish, uh, who's probably never seen this film because uh, he's not seen any films. Uh, <laughs> uh, fantastic. I have had. A lot of fun talking about this, John. I it's really am. It's with, yeah, I, actually, I, let's do more shit films. And I know I say let's do less I, shit films, but let's do more films I, had more I, fun, I had more fun doing the show than I had actually did watching it. So that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> it's not fucking hard, though, is it? <laughs> uh, anything to say to our lovely uh, uh, friends and listeners before you go? Yeah, just um, when, you're, <laughs> when, you're, when you're watching movies or watching anything like this, just have an open mind because... Uh, I always think that these, these films are ten times better than they are, but the actors were all good. That was all good. Just as a bit, of sh- the ending spoiled it for this mm-hmm. one. So I felt as if it was a bit of an anticlimax. So don't blame others for watching it shit because it's the film's fault. That do you know what? That's a really good point because I've been watching films for some stuff I've been doing with Dean, um, new films, and they're they're not always great. Like I I, I technically could put down that I'm a film reviewer now because I've reviewed a couple of films, and sometimes they're bad. But I don't want to say this is just shit. It, it can be unremarkable. It can be confusing. It, it can be bad. Yeah. But it's got some fucking merit. Otherwise, we yeah. wouldn't be where, where we are today watching it. Oh, no, no, it. totally, yeah. Especially I'm, in this case, because the, the actors in this were ten times better than the actors. Oh, the, long, but... yeah, the actors in this are exceptional. It's, but, not, yeah, you... it's not particularly well written. It, mm-hmm. It's competently filmed. Yeah, yeah. But it is, it's delivered by some absolute exceptional character actors. Yeah. Oh, agreed. No, no. I just, if you watch it, just don't expect too much at the end. Just, uh, <laughs> and next week is a week off, listeners, and we'll be back with uh, Aaron Huggett's Choice the following uh, week. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you uh, if you like, we do follow us hundred one zero zero things we learn from film uk on our socials. Uh, until then, uh, he's been John, I've been Planty, and this has been 58 things, inexplicably that you guessed, that we <laughs> learned from the howling. See ya. See you guys. <laughs>